Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room. Today we're going to take a look at a book that had a bad movie adaptation. Well, I heard the movie was pretty enjoyable, but yeah, I didn't really adapt the book from what I understand. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're going to claim something source material, it should have something in common with the source. So I know by now, depending on how picky you are about your book to movie adaptations, you have four or five guesses already set up. But not to keep you in suspense any longer, though considering Lux put the name in the title. <laughs> <laughs> I have to do that. It helps with Google search. Yes, so we are looking at Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. And just to let you know, we have nothing against you for liking the movie. Just to let you know, I haven't seen it. Uh, it's possible to enjoy movie adaptations of books. The trick is to treat it as though it has nothing to do with the book while you're watching it. Because apparently that's what the people who made the movie did. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning. Pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could each eat, and Grandpa was doing the flipping. It's illustrated style. It's a hatch technique. There's no colors except for the text background. So all the texturing and detail and shading is all hatch work. And for those who don't know, hatching is where you draw lots of little lines to create texture or lighting. Art lesson in with your book reading. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed towards the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. That is a very surprised expression that boy has. More of horror, really, than anything. He just took a pancake to the face. I would have been, huh. That's one way to get up in the morning. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that landed on Henry. Let's see, it talks about an event happening, which seems to be the dog chasing the cat. Well, the dog is chasing the cat, but it's more that it depicts that happening. It doesn't say it. Yeah. Grandpa was doing the flipping, and then suddenly... Yeah. Something flew through the air. That's why I decided to describe that a dog chased a cat, which ran under Grandpa's legs, and that's what caused the pancake to fly and land on Harry's face. Henry's. Henry's face. And it looks like it's the cat who's getting to eat the pancake that landed on Henry because the girl is feeding pancake to the cat. The dog is over by Mom, nose over the edge of the table like, hmm. That night... Touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean. Things are starting to transition from just hatching to color hatching by the looks of it. There lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. <sighs> Yeah, it's, it's somewhat Wizard of Oz, with the beginning all being black and white, and then... Yeah, it's actually hatching and color. The color is not actually hatched. It's painted over top the hatching. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse, about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day, at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. This is where things get interesting. Well, it did say it was the best tall tale Grandpa ever told. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain, it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. 
It rained things like soup and juice. It snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. Yeah, very nice art style. The um, hamburgers look a little odd, though. Well, it looks like they're just meat and bun. No cheese, no condiments. God, I hope those are cooked. Because raining raw meat would drive me crazy. The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would hear a prediction for the next day's food. Cloudy meatballs. Ah! Yes, the television forecast on this page shows cloudy with a chance of meatballs, also soup. When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in their refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. There's lots of nice stuff going on here, like a woman in a taxi with, I'm thinking those are pancakes. Yes. And they're falling on her taxi. There's a boy with an umbrella and his dog, a bulldog, and they're getting soup from the sky. He's using his umbrella in reverse. A baseball player and... I'm not quite sure who. I'm thinking an ordinary man, a little plump. Perhaps the umpire? Maybe, but I don't see any other outfits on him, like the heavy mask and stuff like that. That would, that would be a catcher. Didn't the umpire also suit behind the catcher? <laughs> also take into account when this book was written. Mm, that's a good point. And there's pie falling from the sky in that picture. Yes, because if you look at the billboard, the signboard, game called on account of pie. Hmm. And I'm not quite sure what's going on in this picture. I think there's drumsticks falling from the sky and a woman's trying to catch them. Yes, a woman is running with her plate to catch the falling drumsticks. Lux didn't mention the woman in the taxi cab is holding her plate out the window to catch a flapjack. And so is her passenger. Hmm. This book doesn't do a lot of descripting of what's actually going on in the picture, so that's why we're taking time to describe. In a little more detail. <laughs> The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny-side-up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast. And most of the time, it rained milk afterwards. Uh, uh, just knowing, oh, God. Apparently, this is hitting one of my... Ooh. Ooh, I just want to take a shower. <laughs> I'm a big lover of food, but just... Clean up. Let's just put it that way. Uh, for lunch one day, Frankfurters, already in their rolls, blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby. Then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. A drizzle of soda finished off the meal. Oh, there's a holes in the roof in the restaurants. That makes so much sense. I get that now. Also, there's a kid with those glasses where you have a big nose and a mustache. Yes, yeah, so this is Ralph's Roofless Restaurant. No cover, no minimum, always open. Why would anyone pay to go to a restaurant when you just... Get your food outside. Yeah. Because the food is raining down because that guy just skidded across that woman's table to get a frankfurter. Yeah, and her teeth just fell out, still clamped onto a frankfurter? Mm-hmm. But going back over to the other image where a squirrel is slipping on jelly. Also, another squirrel has a sunny side up egg on its head. And another squirrel is eating an egg. And birds are in the bird bath of orange juice. Yes, and there's another bird eating toast with jam. There's a lot of fun stuff in these pictures. It's almost like, where is Waldo without all the little tiny things? Yes, and going back to slightly disturbing, there is a bird eating an egg. Actually, the bird's lifting up the egg to get to the worm that's underneath. Hmm. But still, it has its beak on the egg. Yeah. Well, there are birds out there that do eat other birds' eggs. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops, becoming heavy at times, with occasional ketchup, 
Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. I have questions <laughs> that I don't think will be answered. <laughs> Pork chops, right? Pork chops? Lamb chops. Lamb chops. Where did the lamb chops come from? The sky. Because there's animals. Oh my god. I should have had the same question about the eggs. <laughs> and the frankfurters. And the why not the orange juice? It all comes from the sky. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It took me long enough. Don't get me wrong, I'm enjoying this. Just The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for a sanitation department. It had to remove the food that fell on the houses and sidewalks and lawns. The workers cleaned things up after every meal and fed all the dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. Interesting, though impractical about the way they were doing it there. Yes, the... Um vehicle has a plate in front of it and its uh, pickup involves a fork on one side and a spoon on the other. And going back to the other image, it actually described it pretty well because there's a giant jello in the background setting. There's a bunch of pork chops. Uh, lamb chops. Lamb chops. I don't know why I keep doing that. A bunch of lamb chops all over the ground. And some animals and some houses with a nice river coming down. Some swans. Mm-hmm. You forgot the baked potatoes. Oh, yeah, baked potatoes. And the peas. There's, there's the lamb chops and the baked potatoes and the peas. Ah, and there's a frog sitting on a baked potato. Yes, there's also a turtle with a baked potato on its back. The male deer has baked potatoes and a lamb chop on his antlers. All I keep thinking is this town would get real smelly real quick. That's why the sanitation department is so busy. Life for the townspeople was delicious, until the weather took a turn for the worse. There's a newspaper article on this page. The Chew and Swallow Digest. Spaghetti ties up town. Record-breaking pasta fall causes chaos. Traffic snarled on Lower Intestine Street. Oosh. Also, digest? Th think about that for one moment. Yep. And the rest of the articles are actually not legible. One day, there was nothing but gorgonzola cheese all day long. The next day, there was only broccoli, all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Peanut butter with mayonnaise. Hmm. I don't know why, but I was like, I want to try that now. <laughs> you know, because peanut butter goes with cheese. Mayonnaise goes with cheese. Maybe it will, you know. Another day, there was a pea soup fog. No one could see where they were going, and they could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. Hmm. All the pictures are very interesting, especially ones with the kids going, ugh. Yes, that would be the Brussels sprouts, peanut butter, and mayo at a birthday party. Yeah, I wouldn't mind the Brussels sprouts so much. Oh. The Brussels sprouts are pretty tasty. I even thought they were tasty when I was younger. Spinach, on the other hand, I had issues with until... It was cooked one time for me by my brother, and it tasted really well. It tasted really good. I just couldn't figure out why. <laughs> After that, I like spinach. <laughs> the food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls. Some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye and whole wheat toast. Most of it was larger than they had ever seen bread and rolls before. Kind of like America's increasing portion sizes. <laughs> it was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged and the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. 
There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup that nearly flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight, so they had to close the school. Yowza. <laughs> the fire department has giant knives, forks, and spoons, ladies and gentlemen. Lunch one day brought 15-inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick, and the day ended with a stomach ache. Hmm. Fun. Cozy Corner Bookstore. That sounds nice. Yes, it does. And as the time goes by antiques. Hmm. This is at the corner of Belly Boulevard and Meat Street. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse tomato tornado. People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess. There were seats and pulp everywhere. And apparently pieces of houses and a naked chicken. Yes, the wind was so strong it lost all its feathers. Have some of the usual comedic things of tornadoes. Someone's corner of a living room, they're sitting there reading. Someone trying to do toothpaste and it's being blown off in the wind. Someone in a rowboat. Someone being dragged off by their kite. Uh, a whole house. Can't skip that reference. Da, 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 da. And a clock, of course, because time flies. Yeah. And it's losing its numbers. And it looks like there's a salesman at a door. Yes, and there's a curvature of road, complete that's, with cars. That's a really powerful tomato tornado. Mm-hmm. I mean, a it bled all the way over onto the other page. Oh. The sanitation department gave up. The job was too big. Everyone feared for their lives. They couldn't go outside most of the time. Many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. It looks like there's bites sticking out of the text. The, the text block. block. Yeah. There's a giant slice of pizza on a building. Mm-hmm. And a giant burger stuck on a chimney. Look out is spelled in alphabet soup. And some giant donuts. And this poor person has a macaroni noodle stuck on his head. And looks like Flowers by Bernie is open, but Laundra Bright is closed due to heavy food. The next page looks interesting. Yes. So there's giant mounds of ice cream. There's someone crushed under a double-decker cheeseburger. There's a dog stuck to a slice of pizza. There's T-bone steaks about to fall from the sky. There's a woman's house that has been invaded by a giant pickle falling through the roof. There's also a sliced pickle off to the side along with some fries. I guess she got herself in a pickle. Oy. And this poor person, I think that's melted nacho cheese all over the front of her car. I think so. And there's olives stuck to that church's roof. Spanish olives, to be precise. So a decision was made to abandon the town of Chew and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. The people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style, with peanut butter, took the absolute necessities with them, and set sail on their rafts for a new land. <coughs> there's a shark that took a bite out of the sandwich. Also, no matter how stale your bread is, folks, I don't think you can use it as a boat. And I don't think cheese and pizza make good sales. Yeah, I knew. But, you know, if you look at what's going on back on the island, those meatballs keep getting bigger, and those are hero subs. Woo! I guess I could use a hero now. Mm-hmm. After being afloat for a week... They finally reached a small coastal town, which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses for themselves out of it. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at a supermarket. They found it odd that the food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs. No one ever got hit by a hamburger again. 
and nobody dared to go back to Chu and Swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. Hmm. You also have the transition back from the color to the plain hatching. Mm-hmm. The next morning, we woke up to see snow falling outside our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate it a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top, and we could almost smell mashed potatoes. Well, that certainly is a cute story. The end. Yes, it actually says the end on the back page with a bowl of mashed potatoes with a big pat of butter on it. With a background of meatballs and spaghetti noodles. Very cute story, but I can see, based on what I've seen of the movie, I haven't watched all the way through, I've seen parts of it at other people's houses. It has elements of this. They just took it and added a main character who's a scientist who made it happen. Yes, because the town was, like, starving to death. So, yeah, fun. And I love how long it took you to go, food? Falling from the sky? I need a shower. Because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, water at least is mostly clean. It's what you wash stuff with. But I guess nobody really minds if you have a meatball stain on your shirt, as long as it rained meatballs that day. Mm-hmm. I wonder if they were really good at having uh, stain-resistant fabrics. There's a lot of stuff I hope they were really good at. You mean like sanitation? Yes. Yes. Just keep thinking of how smelly that town would be. And how... Uh, I do a lot of hand washing when I have to prepare raw meats and stuff like that. Yes, but the meat that fell down from the sky wasn't raw. Yeah, that's what I was hoping. I was hoping it wasn't raw. They did say at the end that they had to get used to cooking meats, so... Yes, the food that came down was already prepared and for the most part all ready to be eaten. You know, the hamburgers were already on their buns, the frankfurters were already in their rolls, the pie was already sliced. You know, even when they complained about the drift of the sandwiches, hmm, the sandwiches were already assembled. And even the out of control food, the ice cream's already on its cones. That would be deadly falling from the sky. Oh! Well, even just getting hit by a lamb chop or a drumstick would be painful. Mm-hmm. Or those T-bone steaks. They were huge. Uh, I think the T-bone steaks were before... Was that before or after things got bad? That was after things got bad. Yeah, so that would be deadly. Very deadly. See right there. Mm-hmm. Because the food kept getting larger and larger. Like that gigantic slice of bacon that's draped over that uh, light pole. Yeah, you gotta wonder the size of the pig. Well, we don't know for certain that the food is actually composed of the ingredients we think it should be composed of. Because it's falling from the sky and we don't know how or why. Hmm. Because that's something that's addressed in the movie of how this happens. In this book, it is presented specifically as a tall tale that the children's grandfather made up to tell them at bedtime. Hmm. So it doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be entertaining. So did you have any more thoughts on this lovely book? <laughs> it's still fun, but yeah, I'm with Lux on the sanitation thing. Didn't really think about it that much as a kid because, you know, they said the sanitation department cleaned it all up. But how do you clean up things like orange juice and soup? You power wash the entire town? And, okay, the humans can go take a shower, but what about all the cats and dogs that live in the town that might get caught out in this weather? How do they get cleaned up? So the sanitation department's feeding them, but it doesn't sound like anyone's taking care of them. It just sounds like they're there. And this has been Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, written by Judy Barrett and drawn by Ron Barrett. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed this, please check out other videos on Ember's Reading Room and or Lux Analysis. Hey, we even have playlists, so you can just pick one video and then we'll play a few for you. Enjoyed this? Um, in addition to other videos, you can like, subscribe, share, comment. We like comments. Oh, uh, want to check out this book for yourself? 
Look below for an Amazon link. If we can find it for you, we'll post one there. Just want to go shopping? Click the Ebates link to get rebates on places you probably already shop at. Amazon and Ebates are not affiliated with or sponsors of Ember's Reading Room or any content on the Lux Analysis channel.